We are broadcasting live with accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. Welcome to the show. And thank you all for joining us. So we all got a nice little surprise when we came in. There's a new app here called Audience Questions. And, of course, my question for Google. See, how come I don't have a Google <laughs> Questions thing? There it is. Ask a question. It does show up on the live public feed. So if you are watching this, if for the kids watching at home, feel free to click on that ask, or as long as it doesn't say ax, but it ask a question. And uh, and those of us on the panel here who have installed the Audience Questions app will be able to see those questions. Bruce, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bruce? <laughs> what are you doing, Bruce? Oh, it looks like a I'm asking, asking the question. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and ask a question. We have a great topic for today, suggested by none other than Tina Kritzer herself. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning. Good morning, Joanne was not the topic Tina suggested. By. <laughs> not, but it could be because she has not, great stuff that she posts. It's not Q and A. It Are is. The actual topic of today is going to be social media applications. What do you Sweet. use and for what purpose? So, uh, because the question came up, and of course I, well, I shouldn't say of course. I mean, I don't know that it's that obvious, but I do have a recent series of posts on the Sleater blog covering all the applications I use with videos, of course. So I'll show everybody where those are at some point and give myself a shameless plug somewhere along the way, <laughs> if not two or three. <laughs> And, uh, and we'll talk about it. So uh, and a couple of good questions came up before we went live and public um, that I asked people to hold off on so that we could cover them in the live public This is going to be broadcast. great for my tax emails. <laughs> What's the matter, Bruce? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm playing with the ask a question thing. <laughs> oh. oh, it's going to be great for your tax hangout. Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> But no, so, all right. Dub all about you, Bruce. No, no, no. <laughs> Bruce, a shameless plug. Um, for everybody who's wondering what on earth we're talking about, Bruce has his tax hangout every Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. No, that's not what eight, I'm talking about. Eight o'clock in the off season. So from April, well, from like January to April fifteenth, there's no hangout, right? Correct. When do you go off the air for tax season officially? Uh, January fifteenth. So January 15th to April 15th, no tax hangout. April 16th through December 31st, every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m., broadcasted live on Bruce's Google Plus and YouTube channels. <laughs> you can go in and you can ask your tax questions. Aww. My breakfast just came in, folks. Hand. Do I not have the most amazing wife on the planet? I'm yes, you do. I'm going to have my dog grow thumbs. That's What's not that fair. green stuff? Is that... Fruit or something? They're um, alien eggs. Oh. Those look like little melons. <laughs> no, they're little honeydews. And isn't it cool how she cuts them? She has a little melon scooper thing baller. that she uses. To melon baller. Like a melon baller. A melon baller. <laughs> My wife is a baller. Hey, Bruce. Yes? Notice that when we have our internal chat up on the right... It says somebody... there's six things. If somebody does ask a question, it doesn't have a little notification, but yet when I had the question and answer open and somebody left a chat, a little one popped up. Yep. All right, actually, I need to go over and click on the audience questions thing. Well, yeah, because there might be a question there and you don't know it. Let's see. Uh, select. Click the select button to answer the question, can this really work? It would appear so. <laughs> okay, so I just went to Seth's page and saw that little Q&A ask a question, so I clicked on it. Right. And it launched uh, another window, and it brought up YouTube, and it started playing our feed with quite a big delay. And um, so I had to jump out because I was having bandwidth issues. Well, that's not good. Right. That's not good. Well, but well, it's that... because I'm already in a hangout. <laughs> yeah. This That's like the official, the you know, the delay they have on TV in, in case somebody comes off with some foul language. It's a longer delay than that. No, I know. I know. I, I know. A wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> yeah. That too. <laughs> this in case I turn on my camera and realize I forgot to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shirt on. We're good. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. You can't. Good thing you can't see my skirt that I'm wearing. But Bruce is hanging and watching. Yeah. I'm playing with the Q and A. <laughs> Bruce is playing with his Q and A. But we're not echoing. That's that's different. We're muted. not echoing because my headset is working finally. <laughs> Got a new one. No. no, it's the same one. I just I got smart and made sure it was on and working before I launched Google Talk. This is my green frog today. That looks like a that minor green frog for the day. Yep. Is that the That's one the first thing you're going to get done? It is. All right, let me post the uh, fact that we've gone live officially and then... Um... Yeah, warn everybody. <laughs> Weird. And then we'll get into our topic. Rhonda, I see you there. I don't hear you. I'm assuming you're muted, but good morning anyway. I'm just muted because my husband's on the phone. I mean, that's the ah. thing, as that soon as he's off, I'll come back on. And, and we're still meeting tomorrow, that, yes? You know, yes, sir. Direct info. I'm, I'm coming to you. Am I coming to you? Yeah, am I coming to you, Bruce? I don't know. Are you? I can. That'd be kind of cool. Who gets Bruce, are awesome. you in California? I don't understand. No. Rhonda, are you yeah, in Missouri? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. Be like I can be. You know what? <laughs> she may want to be. No, I'm not. We're just doing it on the computer. When I woke up this morning, it was 50 degrees. Wow. Today's high is expected to be 77. Ah, we, have to, we have to do the Friday Hangout weather report. Hold on. Around the, around the country, or globe, if we have international people here. Um, don't see any. Hold on. Let me refresh. His guys, um, it's scheduled to be 90 here today. Free. It's cloudy and 61 well, currently. Jobs. There's a so have you seen the new jobs. Apple iPhone S with fingerprint identification? Yeah, I saw an article where people are going to start chopping off your finger to get the, uh... Yeah. To get your phone. Oh. Hey, that <laughs> sounds like a movie I've seen. So, get, get an Several. Android you'll be safe. The one I recall had Tom <laughs> Cruise, I believe, in it. Well, and then there's the uh, optical recognition, which is also coming, so people are going to cut your eyeballs out. Gouge your eyes out, yeah. Yeah, that was on, like, an NCIS or Bones episode, <laughs> as I recall. It's been on a lot of movies, too. I'm sure it's been on one of the Mission Impossible movies or something with Tom Probably. Cruise. It's even been on the Avengers movie. Yeah. Cool. All right, I posted it, and Hootsuite was giving me some weird errors. Giving you so It was. It was talking back to me. It was talking <laughs> smack. Hootsuite was giving you Bill. <laughs> so, speaking of Hootsuite, I'm going to click done on Bruce's question, first of all. Oh, look, Tim is joining us. No, Tim is inviting me to a hangout. Tim, if you're out there listening, <laughs> he's going back on it. Inviting me too. You're gonna have to come into hours, my friend. All right, let's see. He's going the wrong way. Let's see if I can invite Tim. How do I Tim? tell it no? How do I tell it? <laughs> you have to decline. Click on the oh, button that says decline. <laughs> power off. Power on. <laughs> Okay, and now my invite feature is not working, so I'll just have to send it to him. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but you got a new Q&A feature. I All know, right. that's exciting. Let's hang oh, out my storm shows up. <laughs> hmm. Tim, join us here. Tim, join us here. I should start sharing my screen. I did have a question on uh, Twitter. You know, the feed you get in from... Oh, uh, the topic of the phone. day. Okay. Is there any way you can sort of aggregate or select criteria of particular feed, things you want to have pulled out of your Twitter feed and put some place else? To pull it out of your own Twitter feed and share it someplace no, else? No, so for example, you're following a bunch of people and you're getting, you know, their, their, twi their tweets. Is there any way you can go in and put a criteria on those feeds and sort of aggregate on a certain topic that you want to follow mm -hmm. from them and then have what? A... Probably the, the closest thing I can think of to doing that would be, first of all, you can create a list on Twitter. 
And so if, if it's based on certain people whose content you want to be able to share, you can create a list and then set up that list in a column and say Hootsuite, and then you can share stuff that's in that list. Um, you can also, depending on what app you're using, some apps like Social Oomph uh, might let you create triggers. You can use something like If This Then That, right. and you can set up a trigger that says if something in Twitter has this keyword, then uh, you can't retweet it directly through If This Then That, but what you can do is you can push it to buffer as a retweet. So you can buffer it and retweet it through buffer. But I mean, say for example you wanted to follow something on zero from all the people that you're following and you know maybe they might mention it occasionally but not exclusively. If you wanted to, I'm just thinking of like extracting, like doing a, a query on all your tweets and then getting the results and sticking it someplace else or having to go to a sort of like an RSS feed or something like that. You can save searches. I think you can do that also in, um, I've done that a little bit with TweetDeck. You can kind of customize your columns in TweetDeck, like if you're, if you have a column, if you have a column for specific individuals, and then you can customize that column, I think, to look, to filter by a specific keyword. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, or hashtags. Or hashtags. Yeah, you, hashtags is the other thing that comes to mind, where you can, uh, you know, you can uh, set up a column based on a hashtag. You know, I rarely uh, use that feature, and I don't know why. Because it's a really feature? cool op, the hashtag, to like try and find you know a feed based on whatever that hashtag is. I rarely ever use that feature. Okay, so let me share my screen, and I show you. So when That's we did tweeted. the Intuit Summit recently, all the way to words? the right here, I have my Intuit Summit column, which was based on that hashtag. And when you're using an app like Hootsuite like this, it's actually pretty easy to set that up. All you really need to do is click on the hashtag. So you see initially the hashtag comes in and let's say your mainstream. You can click on it. <clears throat> and then so Hootsuite gives you this pop-up, which it's thinking for a minute, and it's getting the search results for that hashtag. And then once it finishes, it will give me a prompt with an option to save it as a column, which is what I did to create the column that I started with here. You got a lot going on there, buddy, on your uh, browser. Once you set up the column, where everything else it hits that hashtag fall into the column. Say that again. So, for example, you set up your column for Intuit Summit. So, is everything else that has that ha has that hashtag or is going to get dumped under that on that list? Any tweet that includes that hashtag will show up in that column. That's correct. Okay, so you're basically creating a filter based on the hashtag and putting it in the column, and then you can just extract the information that way. Right, and in a way it's like creating a little chat room for that hashtag because that's how people kind of use it is they'll <coughs> reply with that hashtag so that this to see Hootsuite is giving me problems today for some reason. Um, let me remove my Facebook because that before seemed to be what was creating the problem. Um, Doug Sleater, by the way, just texted me and said he's on his way. So he will be joining us soon. Um, I'm trying to find an example here. Uh, see, here's my sent tweets, and I like having this column set up in Hootsuite because I like to be able to see what I sent, especially if I've just posted something. I want to make sure it went out. I want to see that. Um, how, does that it, how does that get filtered? I mean, is yeah, there I'm not going into a function that allows... That's why I said if you wanted to go up and come back. Call. Wait, I'm sorry. It was hard to hear. Um, okay. How does that work? I mean, it's not like you're using a hashtag for sent tweets. I mean, if it... No, that's a generic column that Hootsuite and any social app pretty much will allow you to set up. It's a default kind of, when I go to set up my columns, if I want to add a stream here, uh -huh. then there will be default. So I start off with Twitter, right? Then I have to tell it, uh, and here's sent tweets. So that's one of the standards. So there's certain columns that are standard that you can add in to your social app. Now, is this, so you, the Hootsuite, is this now, is there like a paid version versus a free version that has? Yes. And so this is the the paid version, I'm assuming. I yeah, I always do end up doing the paid versions of these things because I'm a snob that way. So I imagine but, it has more columns that you can have and that kind of thing. If I remember correctly, the free version of Hootsuite only allows you to add so many social networks and then you stop. Oh. So in order to be able to add like LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter, I had to pay. Oh, okay. Okay. There's other things like Hootsuite um, allows you to upload tweets and schedule them. I just don't like the way Hootsuite handles that feature as well as I like the way Social Oomph handles it. Okay. But, so you use but Social Oomph to 
to schedule tweets and then you use Hootsuite to do this kind of filtering and monitoring. Correct. And I'll show you social info. I'll show you all these apps that I use, you know, over the, I guess, the course of the rest of the hour. But notice what else I've got on my Hootsuite. Let me, uh, again, this is beauty of cloud-based or web, you know, browser-based software is that I can just enlarge the zoom on my, uh, my browser. I know Tina likes when I do that. I love it. <laughs> so notice here I've got tabs set up. So you can create tabs so I can monitor specific things. So, you know, this first tab, and this is what I mostly use Hootsuite for, is Twitter. But if I want to, I can go on to Facebook here. And I've got columns, I've got Facebook-based columns. So I don't necessarily have to go into the Facebook website to catch up on what's going on on Facebook. And it does seem to be having problems with my Facebook API for some reason. Hmm. Um, Probably because Facebook changes everything every minute. Yeah. <laughs> but yet it still is able to show my own wall posts. I guess it just can't show everybody else's stuff right now for some reason. But I've got, normally I've got, you know, my main feed, which is my news feed for my personal Facebook account. Here's my own posts. And then I have the Nerd Enterprises Inc. page feed here. Uh, then I have Facebook groups. So you'll see I've got Nerd Social Network help here. I've got the ABO Facebook group in here. I've got Empire Avenue Anonymous set up in here, which is another group. You know, these are all just group groups I belong to. So, you know, you can set it all up so that, in theory, you could access all your social networks right here from Hootsuite, and, you know, you can post comments just the same as you can on anything else. So if I click on this guy's uh, Paul Steinbrecht post from uh, my EAV Anonymous uh, group, I click on where it says zero comments and I can post a comment. I can say, thanks, Paul. Happy Friday to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Little so does he it? know this is coming on a live broadcast. <laughs> so what's an API for those of us that don't Why don't you tweet him that? <laughs> <laughs> um, an AP API, you know, I don't even know exactly what it stands for, but I, it's, it's probably application... Interface, isn't something, it? Something, isn't it like something a, interface. I think it's but protocol. basically, the, the API refers to the piece of the online software that allows developers to get in there and write software that can pull data from it. So, you know, when all these cloud-based programs are developed and they have what's called an open API, what it means is that developers are able to get in there and access information that's in there so they can create apps that will interact with that you know, application or social network or what have you. It stands so I, for Application Programming Interface, yep. Thank you. There you go. So it's sort of comparable to, like, the SDK on the desktop? Correct. Yeah, like, it's like, yeah, that's the QuickBooks kind of version of an API. Um, hey, look, Bergen Co. just tweeted, why choose Bergen for your home remodel? Here's a few reasons. <laughs> um, all right, so now this is interesting. I want to get into my settings here and see if I can fix my Facebook. Sometimes you just have to reauthorize it. So here's like authentication, and here's Facebook. So what I may need to do is pull this out and kind of add it again. Um, actually, these are authentication methods, so other apps can authenticate me using Facebook or Twitter. So uh, let's, I want to go into where I, it has my social networks, right? So, let's go to settings and account. And I always have trouble finding this at first. <laughs> so it's not here. Maybe it's the app directory. Let's try that. <coughs> So no, these would appear to be apps that are set up to work with Hootsuite. Okay, wait. And now Hootsuite is updating. <laughs> this is where I start to get really impatient with these programs. Ah, here we go. So I click on my little icon up there, and here's all my saying. I knew it had to be here somewhere. So, view social networks. Oh, this is from my, uh, what? Or are you social? 
<laughs> yeah, my my head's dizzy. <laughs> so well, it's got every. All right, so I'm going to connect with Facebook again, and hopefully that solves my issue. It remembers my login, which is good. All right, so let's see if that solved my problem. I reconnected it with Facebook. Let's come over here to my streams. Let's go to Facebook. And I'm still having an error. So, oh, no, but it's coming up. <laughs> it's, get, it's giving me an error, but it's coming up. So, you know, it's anybody's guess. That's one of the downsides to this is we're using free software, so there's no real customer service because why would they pay for customer service to provide support for something that doesn't cost anything? Of course, we're giving up other forms of currency in terms of our information and letting them use our browsing habits as a way to sell to advertisers, but that's a whole other conversation. All right, so it looks like I did manage to reauthenticate my Facebook feed. Um, and these are the kinds of things that make me nuts when it comes to this because oftentimes I'm like plowing through things, trying to do a million things at once, and I don't have time for this. And I get very annoyed when these kinds of things happen. So I'm maintaining my composure, of course, because I'm you know live in public and <laughs> I don't want to sit here dropping all kinds of F bombs. <laughs> I think you dropped the biggest one just now. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's a global one. Uh -oh. <laughs> anyway, now you can see. And what's can cool we, about this is I can... Huh? Can you share that oomph? You want to see social oomph. Okay, one more second. So then very quickly, the other thing I love about this is some of you know I have this other Twitter handle called QuickBooks Answers. I don't even know how many people know this is actually me. And it looks like this is another one I'm going to have to re-authenticate. But I like the fact that I can monitor multiple Twitter accounts within this. It helps. It makes it easy. so that Because if I try and go on the web, I've got to log out of one account and log into the other one in order to see them both. So, and, you, and, you, and you're only posting things once and then carrying them into the correct groups. Is that right? Posting things once, and I, I'm, I don't understand. Well, you have these different groups. Um, so the benefit of... The benefit of using this is you post something in one group to get it out to that social media, but you can copy it or put it into the other feeds. Well, okay, no, these are just <coughs> these tabs are really for you know what I call sort of listening, right? This is for when I want to kind of listen and see who's posting what, or just okay. monitor a particular channel. That's what I use this for. Ah, uh, oh, I can hear. Over here, it's telling me where it's going to post to. So when I go to create a new post, I can, I'm can i going to click off all these. I can say, all right, Marson Pub LA is a restaurant here in Los Angeles that I work with, and I help them with their web and social media stuff, some of it. Okay. So here's my uh, Nerd Enterprises. That's my main Twitter, right? Yep. Here's my personal Facebook. Here's my uh, company Facebook page. Uh, okay. Here's QB Answers. So here I select. If I want to post something oh, right sure. into the ABBA group on Facebook, there I click go. that one. Okay. Right. So that's how I decide where this post is going when I post. But it. you, but you can post to all of them simultaneously. Yes. Yeah, well, now that they're all selected, anything I type in here and say hi. That's brilliant. We're yep. That I like. Playing with Hootsuite. Come watch us on G Plus. So that's how. Okay. Okay. Then I come over to my G Plus channel and I just want to, you know, link people in hi Tim. Um, so I click on the timestamp from the live feed right now, right? And that opens up a new page with a link directly to that, okay. right? So there's no mistaking where people are going. That's what I often do for some of you guys when you tell me you can't find the post for the Hangout. And then I come back over to Hootsuite, and over here where it says add a link, in, and then click shrink. So you don't post directly to Twitter. You post to Hootsuite, and it goes out in Twitter and the other ones? Well, I'm writing it in Hootsuite, but Hootsuite doesn't Hootsuite itself isn't a social network, so it's just an application. So I'm using Hootsuite to post directly to all the networks that I've selected here. Okay, so it, it pushes out. It pushes out it to all those. It pushes it out. That's so cool. It's, it's as if you had posted directly in Twitter or Facebook. It just basically. <coughs> it, yeah, it will. It'll show up. You know, it, again, assuming I don't have API issues, and there seems to be issues this morning, but it will show up, you know, in each of these locations that I specified. So if Facebook works now, it, this post will show up in the ABO Facebook group. I'm yeah. going to go look. <laughs> so, One thing I, I noticed on your Twitter content, it looked like you were recycling 
you know, information from previous years. It looked like you'd set up and it just sort of yeah, like, kind of like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is that? Yes, so uh, that's that's where social oom um comes into play, and you can do it with Hootsuite too. So I can go in here to scheduling, right, and I can turn the auto schedule off, so that, and I think that's what I need to do in order to be able to actually schedule the tweets, um, or wait, uh, try the bulk message uploader. So here in Hootsuite. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Can you um, say grab like say twenty, you know, items and then schedule so it'll you know post every hour, one each hour, and then when it gets to the bottom, we'll go back to the top. Is it kind of like recycle, like a loop? Yeah, with uh, with social link for sure. Hootsuite, I don't know if you can recycle. I think you can mm -hmm. upload it once, and then um, you know, and then you'd have to upload it again. So. Mm -hmm. Hootsuite is having problems. So let me let me go into social oomph, and I'll show you how I do exactly that with social oomph. So because we didn't get a Facebook note, we didn't get a Facebook. No, it's not. So Hootsuite is having problems this morning. I have no idea why. Oh no, hey, no, no, Doug, no, 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 do you? Do you? I mean, no. I got it. Hi, it welcome. showed up in, in Abo. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So it's just having problems. But notice, right here, if you look closely, let me enlarge for Tina. I like picking on Tina. I know. I like it. It tells me you love um, me. <laughs> notice here it says via Hootsuite. So when somebody posts on the web anywhere, you, there's usually something like this on every social network that lets you know what they were using to post. So this lets you know that my post came from Hootsuite. Got it. Hey, okay. Seth, have you ever used um, TweetDeck, or do you just prefer Hootsuite better? I used TweetDeck at first, and then I sort of moved up to Hootsuite. The TweetDeck is, I, I think of it now, and this is just my own thing, uh, this is not nothing official, but I always thought, I, I now have thought of TweetDeck for a while as kind of like the beginner app for Twitter and the others, and then eventually I, I feel like I graduated to Hootsuite. You know, they're just, uh, and they both look and work very, you know, very similar, mm -hmm. but um, there are things that Hootsuite does ultimately that I like better than the way TweetDeck does it, and TweetDeck also, to my knowledge, still does not allow you to do bulk uploading. No, so, that's why I use I Buffer. Think, yeah. So, and, but, but Buffer, you can't really do a bulk upload, can you? You can schedule them. You can schedule them, but you can't... They won't so, return. They won't be repeating. Well, not only that, but you can't... You have to still individually create each post and then schedule it. But right. you can't upload a file like I do, like Dennis is talking about, how he's, he's saying that a lot of my tweets seem automated, and they certainly are, because at a certain point I said, okay... I've got a lot of content, but I don't have time to sit there individually posting every tweet for every link to every you know tutorial that I have on the web. So I decided I wanted to find a way to automate that, and I did. I, I found you know I used to use uh, something called Tweet Spinner at first, and then eventually I settled in on Social Oomph for all this kind of automation. So let me show you a couple of things here, actually. In Can my you brain, upload to G Plus. <laughs> Through no, uh, no. G Plus, the only open source sort of program that I know of that works with uh, Google Plus is DoShare. Nope, not anymore. <laughs> Buffer. Buffer does it to your to your corporate page. Buffer can yeah, to you, Google Plus. Only now? to one, not only to your um, business page. Business page, not your profile. Okay. Soon so enough. DoShare, DoShare is an app that works in Chrome. <laughs> Chrome extension. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. You yeah. <laughs> push a post and have it scheduled to be published later. What am I missing? It just doesn't sound right. Never mind. It's like douche share. <laughs> douche. Oh. <laughs> douche hair. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, all right, so if I go here to what I call my webcast entry log, this is an Excel file that I keep, and notice I got my Office Docs working again, by the way, for those of you who were following along on Facebook yesterday, but I'm still reformatting my hard drive. I'm not happy with the way things are running. <laughs> so here's what I do with Social Oomph, and I'll just kind of, and I have videos, by the way, on the Sleater blog that walk you through all of this. So I'm going to, while I'm waiting for Excel to do its thing, over on the Sleater blog, in the Experts Corner, if you go to Seth's video blog, you will find... A series of videos here. Um, it goes back a little bit. The last one in the series is this one, Kick Your Social Productivity into High Gear Part 2. 
And actually, if you click on, let's say, this one, <coughs> this is the one that actually walks you through social oomph, what I'm about to show you, I think. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the bottom and under the tags, click on social media, you'll pretty much see all of these in one kind of stream on the Sleater blog. Right? So that's Sleater.com slash blog, over to the Experts Corner, Seth's video blog, and you'll see. So there's five ways that accounting professionals can effectively use LinkedIn. Actually, there's more than this. So the social media, I have to uh, figure that out with Charlie because there's more posts that should be on the social media tag, and that may be my fault. <laughs> so if I just go back here, because I want to make sure you can access all of them, my video blog, they're all in succession. So once you see this one, Kick Your Social Productivity into High Gear Part 2, then here's the first one before that. How to use Twitter search to grow your business. We'll take a look at that in a couple of minutes. Um, how can I share content with, uh, without overwhelming people? This is a post on Buffer, essentially. Uh, I did a, a, a thing on RSS feed readers. This is when we found out Google was uh, ending theirs. Um, and so that's it. So in the Sleater blog, you'll find a series of you know things that will go, obviously, more in-depth than I can do right now on a lot of this stuff. So going back to Excel, what I do is every time I create a new blog post, I add it to this log. And what it is, is it's just a date, and it's got the, uh, the URL of the blog post, and I think I'm filtered here. I need to clear that. Um, <coughs> okay, perhaps not. So I just keep a log of all the information, the sort of relevant information around that post. Um, then over here in this column, I write the tweet text that I want to you know, have be sort of the headline that goes out on Twitter. I go on to Bitly, and I shorten the URL to the blog post. And then the tweet is a concatenate of the tweet text that I've written with a space and then, of course, the shortened URL. So watch how nice this is with social oomph. Now I can take this and I can highlight this whole column, you know, the tweet column, Control-C, <coughs> open up a notepad, Control-V to paste, file, save as, And let's go to the desktop, and we'll just call this tweetstream.text. Save. Now let's go look at Hootsuite, and I'll start giving you the, the nickel tour on Hootsuite. So when you first log into Hootsuite, it can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff on here. So, And my advice to anyone when it comes to something like this is just be patient with yourself more than anyone else. Are you and talking about they, Hootsuite, or are you talking about social Hootsuite, oomph? Hootsuite, but you're showing social oomph. So social oomph. Sorry, I meant to say social oomph. <clears throat> Thank you for correcting me. <clears throat> sorry. sorry to confuse you, Bruce. <laughs> and, and Seth, because um, how do you get people, like, you know, not everyone's reading tweets, but is there a way to drive people to read more tweets and get them more interested in that while you're posting here? I know when we get, when I get busy, I don't read a lot of that stuff, and I'm just wondering mm -hmm. how you encourage more people to be on it and reading it so that it actually is useful. What I do is I have two employees named Vito and Guido, and I send them to your house. <laughs> <laughs> I no, mean, please. obviously, okay. I'm I'm you know being honest about it. I th just like how do you get more people to drive them to that so they use that as you know like the cell phone, you know how they increased usage on that. How do you bring more people there? That comes down to strategy. Hold that question. Let me finish showing you the upload feature here, and then I'll talk about that. Because okay. that goes back also to the uh, sort of opposite end of that spectrum is that we were talking about earlier, which is how do you prevent follower fatigue? How do you stop people from getting annoyed by you know uh, all your tweets? Like Sarah was uh, admitting to me that at one point a few years back she started blocking me because she was overwhelmed with my post. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover that in a few minutes. And no, I know that happens, and I'll talk about that, and I'll talk about my sort of you know uh, feeling about that, and it's going to come down to what you're hoping to accomplish, and that's an individual decision. So right. anyway, going back to social oomph which, again, is the tool that I use for syndication purposes. I mean, case in point, Hootsuite, it's not even that easy to find where to go to upload them. I clicked on the link. I didn't get anywhere. You know, so this is, that's, that's a perfect uh, you know, uh, a scenario <laughs> describing why I like social and better for this. So I'm going to direct your attention here. We go to scheduled updates. Then we have Q reservoirs. And this is the only thing. I hate pop-up menus like this because <laughs> if you're not careful with your mouse, they just go away. Yeah. But the most annoying kind of navigation, I know people think it looks really cool, 
and it does look cool, but it's the most annoying thing from a functional standpoint. Yeah, like, it's plus is worse. Yeah, yeah. Pop up when you don't want them to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and when Google Plus first started, <coughs> there was now at least they hold the new post in a queue, so you click on it to show them. It used to be you'd be typing something, and all of a sudden everything would move down because new posts came in, and it would drive you crazy. So anyway. We go to scheduled updates, queue reservoirs, and list queues. And this is a list of the automated queues that I have. Notice you can see right away, and it's alphabetical. I have these analysts on line ones that are now empty. This is what you see in my Twitter stream right now. I have 239 posts in there that are syndicated. And how does the syndication work? Well, if I edit this queue, let's take a look. So I've just named the queue everything because this is a queue where I put absolutely every post. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take some of the more recent stuff and put it in a different queue to have that stuff go out more frequently. So it's almost like I think of this as like, you know how radio stations, when they play music, they have a heavy rotation list and a medium and then a light rotation list, right? And these are the lists that they, that they use to gauge how, how and when they play certain songs. So the most popular songs are on heavy rotation. They get played the most often. So sometimes I look at my more recent blog posts uh, as, as that, you know, as the, the more popular, more recent stuff. <clears throat> right now I just have this one going uh, in terms of my own content. So this is everything. It's set to publish one every hour, okay? And then here I choose, I have all these different networks and groups connected, but you can see I've got this list uh, program to go to my Twitter channel, my Facebook business page, and my LinkedIn page. Right? I don't push this to my personal Facebook page because I have too many personal friends on there who don't give a hoot <laughs> um, you know, what I'm doing on social media. And, they, and I don't want to, that's one area where I don't want to kind of overwhelm. Once in a while I will post business stuff in my personal Facebook feed, but not like this. You know, I'm not going to have stuff going off every hour with all of my like, high school friends who, you know, again, couldn't care less. Right here, recycle updates. Dennis, this is your question. When a new update is added to the queue, automatically mark it for recycling back to the end of the queue when it's published. So it will never run empty. It recycles the tweets. There's another feature in here, by the way, when I originally write the tweet, where I can um, schedule three or four different variations on the tweet so I can alter the text slightly, and then each time it gets that update, it will randomly select one of those and push it out. So that's a way of mixing it up. So the source for the, say, for example, the Nerd Enterprises Twitter account, the source of that is that text file you created that had the concatenated um, topic and the uh, tiny URL? Yes, and I'm going to show you how I upload that in a minute. So what we're looking at here is just the queue, right, where I'm defining what the queue is and what it does. So with, if I just created this and I hadn't uploaded anything, this would do nothing until I upload that text file. Okay. So the, the text file, you're going to see when I upload it, I would assign it to this queue so that uh, Social Oomph knows, okay, these are the tweets that are going out according to this queue's specifications. One every hour, hit these channels, which days of the week? So I have mine going 24-7. I have every day selected, every time selected. But obviously you could go in here and change that schedule. So what happens when you add things to your text file? Do you, is there a, an automation where you can just override the one that's in there? Yeah, I can purge the queue and upload a new one. Can that be or automated can... like a macro or that, you know, that kind of thing? Or do you have to manually do that? Well, no, because it would have to be uploaded from my desktop. So, that even, you know, there's no sort of, you know, I, I suppose if I was a developer, I could write something that says, look in this folder on my computer every week, and if there's something new, upload it to, you know, I can write the API calls to do that, but I wouldn't know how to do it. It's above my pay grade for sure. Okay. But I'll show you how you can also add an individual. Like if I come up with a new post, rather than having to purge and re-upload the whole thing, I can add an individual post to the queue. And I'll show you how you can do that manually. So <clears throat> the other thing I can do is if I wanted to sort of lighten the load on my followers, especially for the sake of those who are following me on multiple channels, because right now this is going to hit all three channels every time. And that's just the way I prefer to do it. But other people might choose this option, which says, when an update is published, randomly pick one of the selected accounts and publish the update only to that account. Right, So this way, when it posts one every hour, it only posts to one channel instead of all three, and it'll pick one at random. And then uh, 
reset, do not reset the public schedule when I click the save button. In other words, you know, if I made changes here and I checked that off, it would start the queue all over, go back to the very first one. So, you know, and then over here I can set up a seasonal thing where this might be a list of tweets that are for the holidays. So I could say only publish this list or only, you know, turn this on from, uh, you know, October 1st until December 31st. Hmm. Right, so that's kind of cool that I can set these parameters up. So that's you know that's looking at editing an existing queue. Now if I back up on my browser, Dennis, here's this goes back to your question. Right here I can click purge, and it will just delete the whole queue, so, so that I can upload add, a new one. Copy, say for example you've added five posts since the last update, so you'd purge it and then manually copy in the new uh, text file. I could create a new text file with just those five and upload it, and it'll just add those in. Oh, okay. wouldn't have to purge for that. Append, you could just append it to the, the list. Yeah. Okay. Because the text file is like a throwaway file. So once I upload it once, it's it's done, you know. Um, so if I created another one with five more posts, this would come up to 244, and it would, you know, so they'd all just be in there. Okay. Oh, and okay. then where would the... Uh, so you get a new text file. Where would the uh, social room pick up the starting point on the new text file if you purge the old one? It just uh, if I purge the old one, then it starts from the very first one. Okay. If I don't purge the old one, then it's just going to put them at the bottom of the queue wherever it's at in the rotation. Okay. So uh, okay. So it might be in the middle, and it'll just when it gets to those five, it'll just go there and then it'll go back to the top. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, and, and then notice here, then I have the promotional tweets. So this list that's called everything, these are all what I call, you know, what we call value-added tweets. These are all nothing for sale, links to a post that has a tutorial that's going to teach you something that you can use today, right? This is all value-added stuff. Then I have my promotional tweets, and I keep them in a separate queue on purpose because I want to have control over when and how frequently I do this, separate and distinct from what's in here. So if I edit this queue, and it's only going to two targets, it's not hitting my LinkedIn, um, which I'm not sure why. <laughs> Might as well add that one in. <laughs> so Control-Click, of course, is how you would select additional ones. But notice this is going off once every two hours instead of one every hour. So it's half the frequency. Um, everything else is pretty much the same, and now I'm going to save that because I added LinkedIn to that group. So that's my promotional tweets, and you'll notice I've only got 20 of them. So that's another reason when you don't have as many, you want to you know lower the frequency because otherwise you'll cycle through them too frequently. Yeah. So you got to be careful about that. And and I just redid all this like a week or two ago. So. <laughs> That's why there used to be a lot more promotional tweets. I went through and I pulled out stuff that was no longer relevant. I corrected some typos on some of the tweets that were in this queue. Uh, the QB Answers um, is that other Twitter channel that I use, and these are just 40 sort of handwritten uh, QuickBooks tips that go in this queue one every hour. And I need to add to it at some point. I've been a little lazy about it. But it was just an experiment. I wanted to see what would sort of happen if I... Uh, wrote a bunch of tweets and put them out there with no link to anywhere. So I'm not, you know, taking anybody away from Twitter. They're just the tweet itself is the tip. So none of the tweets in this list have any links. And I found that it did very well. I found that it got more engagement than the ones that made you click over to go watch a video or read a blog post. So okay. that was interesting to me. <coughs> and if you, and by the way, so if you click here on updates, you can actually see the updates that are in this queue. And this is kind of neat. So every once in a while, <clears throat> I'll get an email from somebody like Doug who will say, hey, Seth, you got a typo in this tweet. you got to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I can actually fix that right here. I can go right into the updates if it uh, decides to do this today. Web page not available. Excellent. Reload. <laughs> that works. And so here it will show me. So this is going to be the next one to go off right here. Right? Many third-party apps which work with QuickBooks. And so I can click this pencil to edit it, to fix my typos. Or I can click this guy to remove it. And notice it's letting me know that the yes here means it's set to recycle. So here's the whole list, all 48 of them. 
Right. Now, let's go back to my Q reservoirs. Sleeter Conference. This is something I set up to help my to help promote my sessions at the Sleeter Conference. So right now, and you've probably seen this, I have two tweets in here. Uh, each of them goes off once a day, right? So if I edit this, what's happening is every six hours it posts one of them. And this one I have on a schedule. It starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 6 p.m. So pretty much at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day, it's going to post one of those tweets. I scheduled this very deliberately because twice a day I wanted something to go off that advertises the Sleater Conference and says, hey, come check out my sessions. So one of them is specifically aimed at my attraction marketing pre-conference, which is going to take what we're doing today you know, a whole lot further. Um, I'm going to actually show people how to create the content in that one. Um, and and it, so this this is meant to advertise that. And as we get closer, I'm probably going to add more to this and increase the frequency. So and one of these has um. Well, let's go look at the updates now. Where did Bruce go? He just he said I got to run. He had to eat it. He had to eat his frog. He got bored. Uh, <laughs> me too. He's writing some tweets. Social media down. So here's my uh, two tweets in my Sleater Conference queue right now. Come hear me give a three-hour lecture on attraction marketing. Use promo code NERD50. And then accounting technology is an ever-changing kaleidoscope of apps and chunks of the business process. Get it simplified. And this links you to the pre-conference sessions page on SleaterConference.com. This one, I believe, takes you right to the registration page. I couldn't fit the promo code in this one because it's too long already. So, again, you can set up specific schedules for specific purposes, and probably one good thing to do on this would be to um, tell it to stop on November... Might as well just go through the conference November 6th, right? That way I don't have to... Oh, I have to put in uh, both ends. So we'll just say, uh, since today's the 13th, September 13th, Make it to 12th just to be sure. All right, so now I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to remember to go back here and turn it off after the Sleater conference is over. So that's helpful. Well, can't you make it expire? <coughs> uh, well, it looks like I can only set the schedule seasonal. I don't. It doesn't look like I, I can set an expiration specifically. But as long as I say only do it between these two dates, then I have after November 6th. I have you know, until September 12th of the following year to remember to go back in and either change or delete it. <laughs> now, you can also pause these. So I can come in and uh, if I have to go edit the queue. So if I let's say I wanted to stop the promotional tweets for today. I could edit the queue and check off this that says pause this update queue, and then you have to hit save. So that way it'll stop. It'll just stop pushing tweets out on this queue. Well, it lets you monitor your all your um, social media like the other program did? No. So this is strictly a publishing tool. It's not a listening tool. And you know, and so Hootsuite is what I use as the listening tool. This is what I use for automation and syndication. Hootsuite is what I use to go in there and actually interact live with people on you know on social media. Um, then I also have Nimble. Right, so Nimble is a social CRM. It brings social media into the CRM concept. So it's really cool. So this shows me, like, uh, you know, this person asked to join the Admo group on Facebook. So I see that right here in Nimble. This is, this is, this is a, a stream of all my feeds, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and my Facebook page. Everything that happens all in one place. If I want to, I can click on just one social network and see only what's going on there. So I love Nimble for this purpose, plus... If I go hover my mouse over Joanne's name, for example, it gives me a little dossier on Joanne. I can see, okay, she's in North Syracuse, New York. Here's her website for her business. I can even see her birthday. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be posting my Amazon wish list soon. All right. So, and I can, you know, so I can see a lot of information. Plus, if I click on her name... 
and then let's say I choose here, I don't have her officially as a contact in my Nimble CRM, so if I choose Import Contact, <coughs> it brings her in as one of my contacts, and now I can see her Facebook stream. I'm only connected with Joanna on Facebook. If I click her name again, what it might start to do is suggest other social profiles. It shows me shared connections. We have some people in common. Um, but it, so it's not showing me, you know, sometimes it'll start pulling in. It'll say, oh, it looks like this might be her Twitter channel. It looks like this might be her Google+. Plus. So depending, if you're using a different email address on different social networks, then it, I think it goes by the email. So that's how yeah. it kind of finds matches. So that could explain why I'm only getting Facebook on here. So this is a great listening tool, you know, to me. And also, so let me um, search contacts. Let's search for Doug Sleater. Who? <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, so, my mom raised Smarties. <laughs> so here's Doug Sleater. I can already see that I have his Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn here. He's also starred as an important contact. Important. And Nimble does that for me because, Very. you know, if I have a lot of correspondence with somebody, Nimble will... At some t sometimes it'll ask you, I'll show you their today thing, which is really cool. It'll ask you, is this contact important? I can say yes or no. But notice here we have shared connections, plus notice I can see Doug's social stream. I can see what's going out on Twitter for Doug. Um, also over here, it even because I have my email connected to Nimble, it even shows email correspondence. So I have recent emails from Doug. Well, hang you know, on. This is one. I just tweeted something, and I don't know why it's not there. Or maybe I tweeted it from Sleater Group. But if you well. Um, let's see which, because I only have one of your Twitter, so I have a feeling this would be at Sleater Group, not at Doug Sleater. But yeah, this is the at Sleater Group one. But I mentioned you in Twitter, so... Okay. So, so if you mention that. me, that should show up here in my signals. Um, let's that go to notifications. Because I couldn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Well, there's also a question and answer over from Doug, too. Did you notice that stuff? No, I was on the chat. I was watching yeah, the chat. Saying. There's no notification, so you can get off of what you're doing and not even know people are asking questions. I'm sure they'll figure that out. That Q&A was when I was in the car saying, ah, uh, I'm on my way. Oh, gotcha. Do I have to be in de detention, Seth? <laughs> I was like, hey, fine. I ended up getting you over here. Wait, so let's go back to Nimble. Where did Nimble go? Oh, there you are. Um, it was I have Rhonda thanking me. Maybe there's half. You have to manually sync it? No. I have. So sometimes you have to hit refresh. It should go by itself. It was at 831. Oh, okay. Well, these are. See, I have to trust this because I want to use it, maybe. <laughs> Is it either this or Zoho CRM, right, Seth? Right. All right, so let's not go to notifications. Let's just go to all streams here. Is it not there or there's just a lot of traffic? There's well, lot. I, it could be both in my case, but because I do, you know, I have a lot of people that I'm following, and <coughs> but if I go to all streams, it should show well, me everything. You are at Seth David, are you? No, at Nerd Enterprises. Oh, that's why. Oh, uh. <laughs> uh -huh. It was user error. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, Seth David is not the Seth David. <laughs> the problem usually lies somewhere between the chair and the keyboard. <laughs> no, uh, between the top of the head and the neck and the neck. <laughs> <laughs> so that explains that one. Yeah. But so that social uh, that's nimble. We saw social, um, and Nimble, I can also post, I can click status update, and I can post to all these networks here, my Twitter, Facebook, my Facebook page, my LinkedIn, right, and I can schedule it with Nimble by clicking here, schedule your post, I can put in the date and time exactly that I want to uh, schedule it for. Now, so that's, that's similar to Hootsuite. Yes. Now, check out what social oomph also does. Let's go back to that for a second. Over here, if I click schedule new update, so... Dennis, are you still with us? Yes. So let's say I have uh, one new post that I want to add to a particular queue, right? Let's here. You, let's do this. You guys help me write a promotional tweet for Nerd Enterprises. Let's come up with something that sells one of my services, okay? So let's say I want to say, "Hey, have you 
had a private QuickBooks. Notice I put the hashtag in there. Session with us lately. I've got okay, one. For that is, myself. Go ahead. Okay, this is for your cash flow. You okay. Say, uh, uh, profits and opinion, but cash or lack thereof is cold hard reality. Uh, see how you can improve your cash flow with, you know, your. All right, slow down because I got to get all that. So profits and opinion, but but, ca but cash or lack thereof is cold hard reality. Not flow. Cash. Back up, back up, back up. Just cash. Cash. Ah. Just delete and down on me. Struggle. But cash. See, we all want to just lack, lack there more. Or lack thereof. Is cold hard reality. Is it really going it's, that slow for you? It really is going that low for me. I, I, my, I'm using way too much resources right now, I'm sure, because I have so many tabs open and so many things going on. Um, and especially running the Google Hangout itself uses up a lot of bandwidth. All right, so profits and opinion, but cash or lack thereof is cold, hard reality. Find and then let's link them to that product. So now I have to go find the product. So what I love about this is my SEO is pretty good, especially if I search for something very specific like nerds cash flow. Right on Google. I love this. I'm getting like a free shameless plug in my hangout. <laughs> there it is. <clears throat> I can hear your computer <laughs> crying. <laughs> I'm, it's getting a it's getting a reform out of the hard drive tomorrow. I promise. All right, so we've got that. So now I copy the link. Let's go back into Social Oomph. Paste it in. I click this short URLs guy right there. Okay, so now I've got my tweet written. Profits and opinion, but cash or lack thereof is is cold hard reality. And then. Uh, we can leave it at that. So notice it lets me know 88 characters are entered. So I, I know I haven't gone over my 140 character limit for Twitter. <coughs> now let's look at my options. I can save this update. Uh, this text is a draft, so I can just use it later. I can say, don't schedule. Just add this update to my queue reservoir. So boom, that's what I want to do here is just add that in. So it'll permanently go into the rotation. Even though I have the queue reservoir already programmed to automatically recycle everything, it still doesn't hurt to be sure by checking off this guy here where it says, when published, put the update back in the reservoir at the end of the queue. Jeez. This is complicated. Save. It's got a lot of moving parts, which gives you a lot of flexibility. That's the bottom line on these things, is if you want a lot of flexibility, you have to live with a little bit of complexity. That's the reality. You know, if you want simple, then it'll be simple. You won't have as many options, right? So, because my other choices were, I can publish right now, and it'll be published within 60 seconds, and then I can just choose which accounts I want that to go to, right? Or I can publish based on, you know, a certain amount of time from now. I can say, publish this in one hour from now. Or I can be very specific and say, publish at exactly this day and this time. Okay, so and then if I... Fuss. Sorry. What? You're just asking Joanne, are you no fuss? Oh, she's yes. Fine. Yes, I am. Okay, cool. So that's how we um, that's how we can add an update. And so, Dennis, to be honest, if I just had five things to add, I'd probably just do each of the five this way, you know, rather than do go through the process of uploading a text file, which, by the way, I still haven't shown you how to do that. So let's go to queue reservoirs and let's go create a new queue real quick. All right, I'll just call it sample. We'll say publish it uh, once every five days. Make it seven. So let's create let's create a queue for the Abo Hangout, right? So actually, let's say publish. Let's see, once every hour. Watch this. I won't block you. Okay, well, there's not going to be that much in here, and, and we're going to set it on a schedule. So here's how this is going to work. So we're going to go with um, 
let's see. Nerd Enterprises Twitter. We'll go to the Facebook page. Let's go to the accounts, bookkeepers, and business owners group. These are gonna we're gonna write announcements to let people know, hey, the hangout's happening in a couple hours, and then one hour, and so on. So this will just be stuff that goes off on Friday mornings. Put it in Nerd Social. Uh, not tech, tech Help. That's a group I created and disbanded. <coughs> Nerd Social Network and Tech Help. We'll go there with it. And we'll go to LinkedIn. Right? And he, that one I'll even go to my personal. Because that, you know, my, you know, everybody who's connected to me personally might be interested in checking that out. So now on the schedule, I just wanted to go on Fridays. Right? And I wanted to go from... Let's just say 6 a.m. through 9, right? So that it ends by the time the Hangout's over at 9 o'clock, which is right now. But we'll go into a little overtime today. So I've created the queue. Whatever I put in here is going to go off one every hour. You know what? Let's make it uh, every 30 minutes, right? Because the idea is just to have them go off before the Hangout starts, really. Okay, and then uh, when a new update is added, automatically mark it for recycling. I think everything else is all set, so I can click save. Don't you need to name it? I did. Oh, you did? I thought yeah. it said sample. Yeah, I called <clears> it sample. <throat> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We can rename it. So let's go list the cues. And here's sample. Let's edit that <coughs> and call it Abo Hangout. Save. So now, let's write a couple of tweets real quick saying, you know, the ABO Hangout starts at 8 a.m. Pacific time, right? Something like that. So let's schedule a new update. The ABO Hangout goes live at 8 a.m. Pacific. And then I want to link them just to my uh, Google Plus Profile. I have too many of these tabs open. That's part of my problem with the slowdown. Yeah, the tab addiction. I do. And it's not so the cola. Come over here. I just want to go to my profile because when these tweets go off, I won't necessarily have the link specifically to the post, right? So at least if I take them to my profile, in theory, it'll show up right at the top. Right, just like this is here. This is the live post that's going on right now as we speak. If I come over here, post that in, shorten the URL. Okay, uh, and then don't schedule, just update. There's ABO, save. That's one in. Next one. Each week, and you feel free to jump in and help me write one. We lost Dennis? Yeah. Yep. Right, Doug? I got to go too. I got to jump on my weekly. Okay, Sorry. I gotta go too. So I hate to see you, you, but this is really cool. Off to off to Australia. So see you guys. Enjoy. Bye guys. Good travels. Yeah. See ya. All right. So each week, I'll finish this up soon since we're losing everybody. Each week we review software for business and answer questions live. have the link on my clipboard, same URL, shorten, add it, save. That's really nice. Boom. So I can just go in and add all day, and it'll go according to the schedule. <clears throat> and that's how I sort of, you know, that's how you can prevent follower fatigue. Now, let me say something on that, because it came up a couple of times, and I didn't get to address that. I know that was one of Sarah's questions. So <clears throat> and we'll do more on this. We'll do more on this next week, even. Um, let me turn off my screen share. Can you guys see me? Because mine's still showing. Oh, there we go. You're, you're there you are. are. There you are. There you are. There you are. I froze did. So, all right. So let's talk about how to not to overwhelm your followers. And I mentioned earlier that one of my comments on this is you have to consider what your own objectives are. I know that because I post a lot of stuff, 
especially if someone is not following a lot of people, all they're going to see is me. And it's going to annoy people, and I'm going to lose those. And to some extent, I accept that that's a reality. Because my goal is to put a ton of content out there. My goal is to you know, publish and syndicate a lot of useful content that people can use. And I've told people, look, I'm not going to be offended if you unfollow me. I get it. Um, and the other side of it is, when you are following a lot of people, it won't be all me because I'll be mixed in with all the other people that you're, you know, who, who like me are perhaps tweeting or pushing out a lot of content. So if your objective isn't m like mine, then you want to do things differently. You, you don't want to pu publish every single hour, right? Um, my thing is, uh, my part of my brand of Nerd Enterprises is that. I'm a, I'm a curator. I produce a lot of content. I publish a lot of content. I want to be an information resource for people. And I like to think that I'm a valuable one. And the feedback I get suggests as much. But I also understand if somebody's new to Twitter and they join and they follow me, they're going to be buried by my tweets. They're going to be like, forget it. And <laughs> at one point, when I was uh, following a lot more people than I am now on Twitter, I was just, my, my mainstream was useless to me because there was so much going through it so quickly all the time. I couldn't even keep up or read any one thing. So that's when I started playing with Twitter lists and I created a list called The Following Within. And that was a list of just the people whose content I was really interested in getting, right? These aren't people I'm pushing to. These are the people whose content I want to read, people that I know, people who, um, you know, thought leaders like, you know, uh, uh, people like Chris Brogan, Chris Perillo. Uh, Chris Voss. Apparently, if your name's Chris, you're going to do very well on social media. Um, <laughs> but these kind of people, you know, are in that list, so I can see them because theirs is content that I really want to read and absorb when I can. What I also did was I created a paper.ly, which is another app we can cover, you know, maybe next week or so, um, based on that list. And what I found was that it really nicely aggregated all the stuff I like to read, and then it started building a following of its own. A lot of people. Um, from what I understand to this day, like to read that paper because it's got so many different people's content in there that are interesting, like those guys I just mentioned, but also I have people like Katie Couric in there. I mean, I have a wide range. So it's Say really like reading again. a newspaper. Say the name paper again. Paper.ly. Paper. <clears throat> if you Google the Follow Friday hashtag, you will find, I think it's it, it shows up under that search, the follow Friday hashtag. Yeah, you'll get in the search results on page one, you'll get a, uh, a post that I wrote. It, it's called the follow Friday hashtag, but it actually talks about paper.ly and walks you through how that works. So, in fact, here I'll post the link in the chat for you. But again, we can talk about this next week in a little more detail. Okay. And here comes the link in the chat. All right, let me check audience questions. That's a good point, is there should be something that kind of pops up and let us know when there's something new. Yeah, I think they'll figure it out. Yeah, obviously it's a brand new feature. So... That post area you can read, and there's a video at the bottom you can watch um, that's linked. Excuse me, not embedded, um, so that you can see exactly how Paper.ly works. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh. But, yeah, so everybody has to consider what their objectives are in social media. So I don't mind that I overwhelm some people because I, it, it's, it's, it's in line with my objectives. Not that I want to go out there and overwhelm people, <laughs> but... Based on what I want to do, I accept that some people are going to get annoyed and they're going to unfollow me. That's okay. I, I have north of 11,000 followers now. And it's funny, that dropped off at one point. I had gone over 11,000 and then it went back down below, which tells me people are unfollowing me all the time, but also new people are following me. So I'm okay with that. And that's another thing I learned from reading Gary Vaynerchuk's Crush It, which is not to get too hung up on the numbers. You know, just go out there and do what you're going to do. You know, create whatever it is you want to create. The numbers will come eventually if you're doing something good. You know, and that's what happened with me. At one point, I ramped up my Twitter to, like, over 25,000 followers. And then I realized a lot of them were just people who were following me because I had followed them or vice versa. And so, to me, that's not, like, a real good uh, gauge of connections, right? Mm -hmm. 
right. if we're just following each other because we're following each other and no other reason, we're not actually interested in one another, what's the point, right? So at one point, one thing that one of the reasons I originally took social oomph on is it has a feature that you can choose, and I warn people to use this sparingly, but it has an, uh, a feature where you can say unfollow everybody. And it will unfollow everybody that you're following. And at that time, I had like 25,000 people, and it unfollows them. It, it paces it out. so that Because if you do it too much, too quickly on Twitter, they'll kind of flag you for spam or whatever. So what I did was I kind of wanted to start over. I wanted to do over on Twitter. So I posted some announcements on Twitter saying that I was going to do this and letting people know, don't worry, I'm going to follow you back. I have my list of people who... You know, I, I know and engage with, and a few people, it was kind of touching. A lot of people reached out to me and said, please make sure you follow me back, you know, making sure that I was aware that it was important to them. And, I, of course, I followed all those people back. Um, but I started over. And, by, and, and sure enough, what I expected to happen happened. As I started unfollowing people, a lot of people unfollowed me, which, again, tells me they're only following me because I was following them. And, again, that's not a relationship. That's not, that's nothing. That's just mm -hmm. stupidity to me. So I, you know, so I started over and I, you know, I, I let it happen organically. People who followed me followed me. And then I started not necessarily just following everybody back just because they followed me. Because again, that's disingenuous and that's not how I want to sort of be. I followed people back who were interesting to me. At one point I had an autoresponder that, that in so many words basically said, hey, you want me to follow you back? Mention me. Let me know why you followed me. At least if I know you're willing to take the time to engage with me, then that's pretty much good enough for me to say, okay, then, then it's worth following. But I don't want to just automatically follow back everyone just because they followed me. That's not engagement. So, And some people have told me, look, I don't care if you follow me back or not. I like your content. I just, I'm just i following you because I want to see what you're posting. And the ironic thing is because they took the time to tell me that, which means they took the time to engage with me, of course I followed them back. That's how I look at that. And that's kind of my basic, very simple rule. If I engage, If you engage with me, if you talk to me, then of course I'll follow you. You know, at the very least, I'll be interested in finding out who you are, what you're about, and I want to know who you are. But if you're just following me and you're sitting there silent, or if I see that, and I go down my list every day, especially now that Twitter has removed the ability to automatically follow back, you have to do it yourself now. So I go every day onto Twitter and I click the followers list and I see all the people at the top because it's in order of who's followed you most recently. So I can see all the ones at the top that still have the following button or, um, or doesn't have that, then I know I haven't followed them back yet. And I go through, and, and for the most part, if I see they have a profile and I see it looks like they're really doing things on Twitter, then I'll follow them back. If I see an egg, which means they haven't even bothered to upload a profile picture, I'll usually ignore it. I won't follow them back. You know, I just, that's my rule, is I want to engage with people who engage. I don't want to engage with people who aren't going to talk to me. You know, We're not sociable on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great way to sum it up. That's who I want to follow. I want to follow people who are like me, who are into social media, who are posting, who are you know sharing, retweeting, who have interesting things to say. Um, you know, and I like to think that I do all those things. So that's kind of uh, how I look at that. And you do because I felt like I was stalking you at one point because I saw you on Google Plus and then I'm like, oh, he's got cool content. And then I saw you on Twitter and I followed you there and then I went back to Facebook only because of the Avo Hangout or Avo uh, group. Stalker. And then I, that's exactly when I started feeling like it. I was like, okay, Google Plus, fine. And then <laughs> Twitter, oh, okay. So I went back to an app just to follow this guy. <laughs> then I felt it wasn't me. It was the whole group, I assume. Well, yeah, but I mean, you were the pretense to that because you had great content. So thank you. And I was starving for information and resources, and you know, also wanted to contribute. I don't have a lot of knowledge like some of the people do, but I find that sometimes I can, you know, answer a question, and it makes me feel like I'm giving back. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the idea is, you know, and that's what social media is really all about. I mean, the first place I learned that really was on LinkedIn, uh, you know, in Michelle Long's group, which at the time was called Successful QuickBooks Consultants. Now she's revised the title to something very long to encompass zero and I think some others, you know, just to, that's why I like accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. It's pretty broad, covers everything. But in her group, you know, the, the thing I used to do all the time, I don't have time for it like I used to, but I used to go in there and just look for opportunities to answer people's questions and be helpful. And that's what I did when I started out on Twitter, is I looked for people who were, you know, I did searches on QuickBooks. And I said, okay, if I see somebody who's, you know, posting a tweet saying, oh, QuickBooks sucks, or, um, you know, QuickBooks is pissing me off, 
then I would respond to them and say, you know, how can I help? Give me a specific question. Maybe I can answer it for you. You know, and that's what I did a lot of. And that's that's actually where the tweet came from. And I think I have to add it back in. I think I took it out. <clears throat> but I had the shirts made up at the last leader conference based on one tweet that got a lot of retweets and got a lot of traction because I had seen somebody posting something like QuickBooks is making me angry. And uh, so I wrote a response back saying, I'm great at making people less angry when it comes to QuickBooks. And all of a sudden, people started retweeting that. And I was like, okay, this is working. So I put it in the rotation, you know, just as a tweet by itself. Again, no link to anything, just, you know, and every time it went out in my syndication, it would get retweets or replies or something, you know. So it's funny. You never know what thing it is that you're going to put out there mm -hmm. that's going to get traction. Yep. Exactly. So. Well, I'm late anyway. for my 9 o'clock meeting. Um. You are. Yes, is that with me? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> thought so. I just want to be sure. Yeah, we yeah. got to go get on the clock here and make some money. So yeah. uh, uh, today at 2.30, I'm going to be filling in for Gina on her QuickBooks Pro Advisors Unite Hangout, 2.30 Pacific. So uh, I guess it was 2.30 Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5.30 Eastern. Yeah, that's right. I'll be there. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.